Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Monday. It was 90, mostly sunny. It rained a couple times just for a few minutes. Got some good rain yesterday. Uh, all the days before that, it's been 95 and hot and humid. And uh, yeah, I uh, very very busy past week. I've got footage, but uh, yeah, um, I have moved and I lost count. I think 80 chickens. Have been shuffled. I switched two flocks. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and all of that, most of, yeah, that happens after dark. So I work until dark and then I work for a couple more hours after dark. And it has been a week. So, all right, I'll just, let's just walk around and I'll tell you who I moved where. Bob, you're a seat stealer. You are a seat stealer, Bob. You have no manners. All right, uh, golf cart, tiny cabin. Uh, this used to be the fraternity boys' flock, right here. And uh, yeah, and then uh, there's a flock down there. That's now the fraternity boys' flock in that coop. Uh, this brooder, I've got uh, Morans and uh, Olivegers, and this one I emptied out. So that's where we're gonna start. I had oh various varieties. Uh, there were five boys and three girls. And so the five boys went to the fraternity boys flock and three girls went to the other flock. So once that was done, I, uh, I decided to switch these two uh, flocks. Uh, basically the roosters aren't eating any of the grass. Look at all this grass. And the roosters weren't eating it. And there's tons of weeds over there. Uh, which I thought because I'm, I combined, there's like 18 boys in here now. So, yeah, plenty of trees to run around. They can weave and, you know, they can chase each other and get away. So, yeah, um, I've been moving roosters into here. Uh, this was Larry's flock, and Larry is still in here. Where you at, Larry? Uh, that's him back there. So, Larry's in here. Uh, let's see, that's a... Uh, uh, blue, that's a black. That's blue copper marons. That's a number two grandson. Uh, that's a, it's an olive agar. Orange tag. And what's a white cougar killbred? Oh, uh, there's Larry's brother, Daryl. So, Larry and his brother, Daryl, have been reunited. And we'll, uh, so I took him out of number two's flock. And that's, uh, Welsimer. Oh, what do we got back there? Okay, and back of the coop with all the weeds, see there's plenty of escape routes if they uh, get to chasing each other. That's black copper marons. That's, uh, he's friendly. Number two, grandson. Then I've got my main uh, olive agar that I was saving, and he's over there. Let's see, I think there's two more of your brothers are in here. And I don't know, I have to come back out tonight and count uh the 18 or 19. let's see which dude one of the one of the white and true blues that looks like larry 
Larry's son and grandson, or this guy, that guy. He flew up on top of the coop and then flew over both the fences into there earlier today. So yeah, you're getting your wing clipped tonight, buddy. And see, that's more work I gotta do after dark. But yeah, so this is now the fraternity boys flock. Uh, some of these I'm grooming, uh, you know, Larry and Daryl are kind of being semi-retired for now. They have fathered enough and I have replacements for them. So I can, uh, diversify my gene pool a little bit. So, but I'll still have, uh, well, Larry might go to a new home. And, uh, Daryl here, he might be available if anybody's interested. But if not, I can keep him around as spares <laughs> in case anything happens. Uh, he's been turning out a lot of white offspring, and I'm not a big fan of the white for this area. Sorry, dude. No offense. And I just sat myself on the fence. Okay, this coop got moved there. So some fresh ground. Uh, Brooder, here are, here are two of the ladies that were in the fraternity boys coop. These are whiting true blue purebreds. Uh, two more wine and true blues there. This is my Welsimer. And that's my Welsimer. And that's my pretty little olive agar. Um, I've got some of, wait. Yeah. Oh, that's a, who's that? Oh, that's a back cross. That looks a lot like a Welsimer, but she isn't. And then this is my new head rooster. Yes, you are. This is Larry's son. Except this son has the beard going on, don't you? Come on, look this way. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. He's being shy. But, he, so he is now the main dude. The only rooster in here. He was, uh, yeah, he was in another flock. But I have not named him yet. Um, I like his size. He's still young. He is uh, active with the ladies. Uh, he's got the nice blue legs that I like. Uh, he's the duck wing uh, with the peak comb, but he has the beard, and so, and he's nice. He's a little bit afraid of me, so that will work. Uh, so how many, I've only got like, uh, I got him and maybe ten, nine hens and three pullets. Three of uh, number two's granddaughters, which I think are granddaughters. I'm pretty sure about two of them but the third one and yeah see this you know the weeds oh you gotta cut down the weeds no man they are great habitat for chickens because they can go hide when you're trying to make film of them all right on the other side of my driveway this is where larry's brother daryl the white rooster this is where he was the main guy but uh i've got this white and true blue in here to replace him and he is old enough and um, I, he's got the lavender blue coloring that I really like, so he was the winner. Uh, he, I did not breed. He came from Murray McMurray the last time I got a batch of chicks. What, uh, last, I don't even remember. The spring? Last fall? Last fall. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, white and true blue. So he's a white and true blue purebred, and I've got a bunch of white and true blue purebred hens in here. There's one drinking, and, uh... That's Buffy, and uh, there's Kelly over there, and uh, that's Barb, and I got an Olivegar walking in there. Uh, this is number two's flock. Uh, I moved Mary Tyler Moore and Private Benjamin. Yeah, you got the flock all to yourself now. He's a little jittery. I mean, uh, I think he'll be okay. And yeah, they got there's uh Mary Tyler Moore and Private Benjamin. They're kind of bumming, but they got each other and they're hanging out together and they can hide between a poke weed and a what uh, kind of tree is that? I don't know what kind of tree that is. But Mary Tyler Moore, Private Benjamin. And I moved them in here because um that rooster I was just showing you is probably private benjamin's uh son so yeah so these guys moved in here the rooster in here came from Mary McMurray, so probably no relation but private benjamin mary tyler moore 
who else we got hanging out yeah see they it's bare up front but they all got <laughs> plenty of weeds out back all right where was i at i got interrupted i have no idea is that elderberry it's supposed to be elderberry i'll see if i see any berries but uh yeah this is the back of number two's flock and then we'll move around here and we'll get to this flock here in the corner uh this is where i had uh uh olivager he was my third generation of breeding uh two back crosses that i'm testing for two blue egg genes but he was in here with some other younger uh, males that were grown out and they needed to go into the fraternity boys flock so the Olivager king rooster uh has been moved to the fraternity boys flock i got a bunch of these uh production brown egg layers in here and i got some olivagers and that right there is number two son yeah he's a pretty boy uh, except he's yeah he's been getting in some fights he's lost a little bit of his crest but that should be taken care of now because he's in here with uh larry's other brother daryl yeah that's another one of no that's one of number two's grandsons i moved him into here because i have he's uh number two's grandson um and his her granddaughter her daughters are in here so they're his aunts i don't know anyway he's being groomed <laughs> it's it's the chicken world it's allowed right buddy hurry up and grow up fast so he's being groomed he's got the crest going on i like his colors and he's being groomed to continue the number two easter egg line uh but yeah just uh moving extra cockerels out of here and daryl the whiting true blue where's he at see up there now we got a bunch of okay there's a bunch of number two's kids and uh Riding through blue and olivager and another olivager. Where's uh, where's Daryl? There he is. He's in the corner. So Daryl, this is Larry's other brother, Daryl. He's riding through blue. He's not the nicest guy. You are not the nicest guy. He does have the beard. I do like his coloring. He's not. Uh, he's probably the smallest one too. So I have only used him for breeding Easter eggers, and uh, and that's what I'm going to use him for again because his daughters turned out beautiful. Uh, breeding him with these production brown egg layers, and I made some Easter eggers, which are in the next flock over. So let's go check out them. Right, Larry's brother, other brother Daryl. Dude, you've been in the fraternity boys flock for I don't know how long. Yeah, I'd be afraid of all these girls, too. Poor guy. All right. Everybody in here has already gone to bed, except the that's a blue copper moron's rooster, which he was in that flock, and I moved him over here, and he is the only rooster left in here. There's a couple young young boys that are they're still growing up. So, uh, uh, yeah, I had too many roosters of the moran's variety uh, anyway so he's uh he's a blue copper moran's he came from deer run farm and he is the rooster in this flock which i'm not i don't think i'm hatching anything out of here hey ladies these are my easter eggers that i made with uh larry's other brother daryl and uh production brown egg layers some of these girls are yeah they got the little beards going and nice coloring you guys really should come out so I can show you off. And then these are little uh, Olivager. Uh, one of them is a white and true blue. The other four are Olivagers. And two. I think three of those five are boys. That figures. Alright, so the blue copper bronze rooster back there. He was moved into here. There were two black copper bronze roosters in here an older one and a younger one the younger one got moved into the fraternity boys flock and the older one got moved into this flock this is where the blue copper moron's rooster was so he just got moved over and there was also a black copper moron's in here 
and so uh, now there are two black copper morons in this flock and one blue copper morons in this flock yeah whatever uh, um, let's see I've got uh, got some Americanas some white and true blues in here with uh, these black copper morons were from a local breeder here in Danville there's one under the tree there's one standing in the doorway and I moved, uh, there were two black copper morons hens in, uh, in this flock and I moved them into here. So now all of my black, all of my copper morons hens, my black, blue, I got one blue and one splash. All of them are in this flock with my two black copper morons roosters. And they're all hiding from me too. Oh, what else? I got leghorns in here. I got an olivager in here. Bunch of, uh... Bunch of black copper morons. All right, so uh, one rooster was moved out, one rooster was moved in. Uh, two black copper morons hands were moved in here, and now we'll hopefully have that number. So, yeah, come investigate it. That was a commotion. That was. And yeah, you can see the leghorns getting. Uh, scratched down a little bit from breeding and so uh, hopefully th that was part of the reasons why I shuffled flocks and got more hens all right what happened over here this is the last of my flocks the only thing that happened here is I had three Welsimer roosters in there I have dragonberry and then I had two Welsimer roosters that I was evaluating from deer run farm and uh, I evaluated them and I chose one over the other one and the other one went to the fraternity boys flock so this is a uh, dragonberry another Welsmer rooster and then right now I've just got a bunch of uh, olive acres. Uh I think there's a couple of, yeah, anyway so yeah all right but I'm not done yet because uh, there are some some uh, youngsters growing out in this brooder and that they will be next um, two different families of white and true blues and I will be putting one family in one flock and another family in another flock so I'm uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a video tonight I'm not gonna try to do that tonight but that'll be happening here in the next few days then that will empty out this brooder and this brooder is empty so that means I can bring some uh, <laughs> some chicks from inside um, I've got nine groups of baby chicks see I got four more of these and then I got some of the big tubs but uh, so I've got nine of them and I'll be moving two of those groups into there two of those groups into the other brooder that's gonna be empty and then I can buy can combine the chicks and the plastic tubs into one of these brooders because these are a lot bigger and then they'll be ready to come out in a couple weeks um, when hopefully the ones in that brooder are ready to you be dispersed so yeah nine I'm gonna sit down <laughs> nine groups of baby chicks inside and right now I got two of them outside but I just emptied one I'm about to empty the other one nine groups of baby chicks in the mobile home uh, I'll be moving two of them out to the empty one then I'll be moving three out uh, to the other one after I empty it and yeah I um, why am I doing all this work right yeah I was planning on waiting and doing all this until I move but I'm not gonna be moving for a few months so I had to do it now because I had to do it now because chickens grow up and so I don't want the bull wrong boys in with the wrong girls and the wrong girls in with the wrong boys and so yeah once they get of age uh, the boys go to the fraternity boys flock and the girls get dispersed and then you know I do the rotation out yeah so it had to be done and one thing when I'm moving so many of them around and rearranging uh, breeding flocks is uh, since I'll have uh, you know a new rooster in with them most of them well not most of them, a lot of them will have a new rooster so I have to wait four to six weeks uh, until I start hatching their eggs and I can know that he is the father instead of the previous rooster 
So that's how long. Uh, usually it's about a month you're safe, but I like to wait six weeks just in case because it's no fun if you think you got a whiting true blue and it's uh, it's not. <laughs> and that can, yeah. So, so yeah, that's why I'm doing all this stuff. It had to be done, and I need to get all the chicks out of the mobile home. And that'll greatly reduce my workload because nine uh, nine groups of chicks that's nine waterers they need it twice a day and I can't take nine waterers in and with one trip uh, let alone the, the feeders also they only get feed once a day though uh, but still that's 27 you know things I got to take in there so that's uh, I think six trips five trips a day I've got a tub that I care I can carry six or seven things at once in um, so yeah, that's like four or five trips a day in and out just to do the baby chicks. So I need to reduce that workload. And you know, that's uh, probably an hour and a half uh, for me because I don't walk fast, especially in the heat. My body is not, uh, not caught up to the summer yet. This is the hardest time of the year. Uh, but anyway, I'm not complaining. Uh, so things, sh I should be freeing up time here in July. And hopefully I'll have more excitement going on in July. I want to free up this time. I stopped the hatching baby chicks. I'm not doing as many videos. I haven't had time the past week because I've been up till midnight working and uh, working all day. And I have got my naps in. That's one thing. I uh, if I'm gonna be yeah, I'm working this hard, pushing myself to the limit. I gotta take my nap. So I have been doing that. Um, been cooking and yeah. So what am I rambling about? <laughs> July should be better. July should be better. I'm reducing my workload. I hope to go down at least once a week, probably twice a week in July. And uh, I've got, I hope I've got enough money to fix the water and the heat and air conditioning. Um, and, then, and then I have no idea after that. We'll just have to see. But so July, look for some things to happen uh, now that I can reduce my workload here. Bob, you have no manners. You, you have no manners, Bob. See, Fle Fifi's over there. She's just snoring away, Bob. I don't know what you're doing. It's hot anyway, and I'm all sticky and sweaty and wet. You're a goof. He's purring up the storm. Uh, grumpy, yeah, Grumpy leaves first thing in the morning. I don't see him until right, right at dark. So he might show up. I gotta stay out till dark tonight anyway, because. This is really the first night uh, that I've let everybody back out. Um, I've been moving them a little bit at a time. Usually I keep them cooped up for a couple days so they learn that that coop is their new home until I let them out. And so uh, so I've been doing that as I uh, move everybody around. But today was the first day everybody got to come out again. And so uh, and that requires me, yeah, the past few days I've been chasing escapees back to where they need to go and yeah just uh, a lot of work it'll settle down and I'll be getting back into the groove in July I got nothing else to say so see you in July take it easy everybody <laughs>